how do we prevent heat loss in anesthesia? Um, so heat loss uh, can be uh, in the form of convection, radiation, conduction, and evaporation. Uh, the, the primary losses tend to be radiation and then convection. So we tend to minimize these losses in patients uh, by wrapping them in blankets using bear huggers. Um, these tend to mitigate a lot of the losses uh, as a result of, of radiation and, and convection. Um, other, other things we can do is provide warmed IV fluids. Uh, we can use minimally invasive surgical technique to, to minimize uh, the access of open body cavities to air where there may be a, a temperature gradient by which heat can be lost. Um, minimizing time under anesthetic is important as uh, the body's own regulation of temperature is, is lost and thus will only be restored once the patient has woken up. Yeah. Um, what else can we do? Monitoring temperature is, is important as well because we, we won't know that the patient has become hypothermic unless we, we monitor this temperature. Yeah. And can, do you know how forced, uh, like bear huggers work? forced air warming devices? Um, so bear huggers essentially heat air and, and blow it towards the patient in um, within a sort of distensible plastic medium. Uh, this will reduce convective heat loss um, by preventing uh, evaporation of not preventing evaporation, preventing um, currents of heat from being generated um, clutching at straws here a little bit in terms of verbalizing <laughs> this. <laughs> Don't worry, I, think I, I know you know, you know how it works. <laughs> how can you warm IV fluids? Uh, so the, the commonest methods are essentially wrapping uh, a coil of IV fluid around a heating element uh, with um, a small container on either side of the warming mechanism to, to catch bubbles of air that uh, precipitate as a result of the heating. Um, once you, you can set a temperature for the uh, coils to warm the fluids to, and then you can ensure that the, the fluid delivery is warm to the patient. The other alternative is you can keep the fluids in a heated environment so that when you administer it, they will already be warmed. And so what, when you warm fluids, what temperature do you warm the fluids to and what happens if the temperature of the fluid is too high? So most of the bear, not bear huggers, the, most of the fluid warmers I've seen operate at a temperature of 41 degrees. Uh, the issue with warming fluids is that due to the, the colligative properties of, of fluids, as, as they get warmer, they have less gas condensed in them. Uh, or dissolved in them. So as you heat them up, uh, air condenses out. And what this can form clinically is the undesirable gas bubbles uh, in heated fluids, um, which is why there's a collection uh, mechanism to, to catch that air and make sure that it doesn't get entrained into the patient. Yep. And that's the end. <laughs>